Hello, and welcome to... I don't have an intro for this video, so here I am rambling for 15 seconds. In this video, I want to go over a guide on what it takes to get the Reckoner title, and how you can speed up the process or improve your performance in doing these tasks. Let's go over the objectives for the seal. First, you must complete the Jover's Wild Badge on at least one character, it doesn't have to be all three. The requirements on the badge are to obtain a notorious set of armor for each role on that character, meaning Invader, Reaper, Collector, and Sentry. Now normally the way to acquire these armor sets is pretty straightforward, you do helmet upgrades via the drifter bounties each week to progress to the next tier from Illicit to Outlaw to Notorious, and then farm out the rest of the armor in their respective tiers of the Reckoning. Tier 1 being Illicit, Tier 2 being Outlaw, and Tier 3 being Notorious. However, what a lot of people don't know is that you don't have to basically grind out 12 helmet bounties per character to obtain the full Notorious armor sets, and in turn, you don't have to play a gigantic amount of Gambit Prime either. What you can do is pick one specific role you want to fully upgrade first. So for example, let's choose the Reaper role. What you can do is pick up your first helmet upgrade slash synthesizer upgrade from the Drifter and complete it. Then you can work on getting the rest of the illicit armor which includes the other helmets for the other three roles in Tier 1 Reckoning. Basically what this means is that you can have all four illicit helmets by doing one illicit helmet upgrade bounty. The following reset you can once again get a helmet upgrade bounty for the Drifter for your Reaper and then unlock the Outlaw Helmet. Now guess what you can do now? Go into Tier 2 Reckoning and farm out all the armor and more specifically all the Tier 2 Outlaw Helmets for all the rolls, all four. So this brings me to your third reset. You can now complete an upgrade bounty for your Reaper to get a Notorious Helmet and a Legendary Synthesizer. So up until this point, up until a third reset, right? You've now completed two bounties from the Drifter, only two, and in this third week you'll be completing a third one for your upgrade bounty to get your Reaper Notorious Helmet and a Legendary Synthesizer. Now once completed, you can obtain the Notorious Armor in Tier 3 Reckoning if you want, but not only that, you can complete the other three bounties from the Drifter that you've been dodging for two weeks and get instant Notorious Helmets for the other three rolls that you were missing while also farming the armor. Now if you're keeping count, you've completed three bounties and if you count the other three helmets, you've completed six, whereas normally you have to complete four each week for a total of twelve. So I feel like this is kind of a time saver considering you don't have to play an absurd amount of Gambit as well. So from here on out, you're able to drop and get uh, pretty much every armor set that you want for whatever character you started on. You'll have a full Notorious Reaper set, and you can go after the other three sets to complete your collection and complete your badge slash Reckoner seal. Next, it requires you to get every gun between Gambit Prime and the Reckoning. There are 10 weapons total, and they are Gnawing Hunger, Bear Rations, Outlast, Nightwatch, Lonesome, Baga Bag, Last Man Standing, Soul Survivor, Doomsday, and Just In Case. All these weapons can be obtained through Tier 2 or Tier 3 of the Reckoning on a weekly rotation. For Swords Week, which is the two Champion Knight bosses, you're able to obtain Nightwatch, Lonesome, Last Man Standing, Soul Survivor, and Just In Case. For Oryx Week, you're able to obtain Gnawing Hunger, Spare Rations, Outlast, Bug Out Bag, and Doomsday. These two boss pools, if you will, rotate every other week. Additionally, four of these ten weapons can be obtained through Gambit Prime when completing very specific objectives during each of the four Gambit Armor rolls. These four weapons are Spare Rations, Bug Out Bag, Last Man Standing, and Soul Survivor. That's the Hand Cannon, SMG, Shotgun, and Sniper, for those that are unaware. All of these drop curated in Gambit Prime, as well as with the Prime Pallet Shader, in case you want to hunt for that, which also is needed for the Joker's Wild Badge. I'm going to go ahead and just list all the ways you can obtain each weapon in Gambit Prime real quick, and yes, these do include the certain medals you need for the Triumphs. I'll get back to those later on in the video for those curious how to obtain those medals. Very important note here, you can only obtain one synth per match in Gambit Prime outside of the post-game rewards, and once you obtain one for any roll, that is your chance for the gun for the match. In other words, if you're going for a specific gun, you can only do that roll or risk getting a different type of synth and throwing away your chance at said gun. For Bug Out Bag, you can do the following and get a Reaper Synth as well as a chance at the weapon dropping. Number one, kill a high value target. Extremely simple, just do damage to one and when it dies, you have a chance at the weapon. Note here, you do not have to get the final blow, it can just be damage and that's it, you'll get credit when it dies. Next is obtaining a Massacre Medal for the Reaper Roll. Triggering this will again award a Synth and a weapon chance. For those that don't know, it's 12 kills within 3 seconds of each other to trigger the Massacre Medal, but I'll get more detail into that later for the Triumph. Finally, the last one I can't personally confirm, but if you reach a certain threshold of PvE kills with Reaper, I believe it's 50, you will also get a chance at the gun and a Reaper Synth. 
Moving on to Last Man Standing, you can do the following to get a Sentry Synth and a chance at the weapon dropping. Number one, kill an invader within 10 seconds of them invading and not killing a single teammate. Number two, defeat five blockers before either team summons a primeval. These must be final blows so you cannot get assists or defeats from other teammates. Additionally, blockers that are summoned after the primeval do not count towards this, so don't bother. And finally, you can defeat three blockers in very quick succession. I believe it's three seconds, but don't quote me on that. If you kill all three within a quick time limit, you'll get another chance at the gun as well as a sentry synth. For the third weapon, Soul Survivor, you can do the following and get an invader synth as well as a chance at the weapon dropping. Number one, as an invader, team wipe the enemy team and get an army of one metal, aka get four player kills while invading. They don't have to be four different players, you can kill three and then kill one that respawned, they count the same. Number two, as an invader, deny 10 to 15 motes in a single evasion. This basically means if somebody or two people are holding a bunch of motes, you kill both of them and they drop between 10 to 15 motes, you get a synth and a chance at the gun. And finally, you can drain a certain amount of motes from the enemy bank during a match. I don't have an exact number, but I believe the number should be 10. Finally, for spare rations, you can do the following and get a collector synth as well as a chance at the weapon dropping. Number one is deposit 50 motes into the bank over the course of the Gambit Prime match. The metal is half banked, however, don't worry about this, even if your bank gets drained, as long as you put 50 in, it will count. Number two is to summon a giant blocker on the enemy, That that's it. You just summon a giant blocker and you get a collector synth and a chance at the gun. And finally, the third way for this is probably the most annoying, you need to get a fast fill metal, which basically means you pick up 15 motes in the span of like 3 seconds, and if you do, you get a synth and a chance at the gun. Finally, the last things you'll need for the badge are the 5 emblems and the shader. Like I mentioned, the shader is from Gambit Prime Curated Weapons, and the 5 emblem triumphs are all from the Reckoner Seal for doing Gambit Prime or Reckoning Objectives. These will get covered during the triumphs, so let's get right into those. So the first four are pretty simple, they're listed as call me, insert, roll here. These are very basic, just win a Gambit Prime match while wearing the full Notorious set for each roll. Next is Swift Reckoning. This one is just completing the Reckoning on Tier 3 with a certain time limit. I believe the time limit is 3 minutes remaining. It's really, really tame. Not hard at all. Just take your time, kill the boss, bam, you're done. Next, by the way, you're going to hear me say next, like, a lot, is uh, Skip Ahead. This one is a 2-week completion. It requires you to beat the Champion Knights, which are called the Swords in this, I guess, in the Reckoning, and then the next week, killing the Likeness of Oryx. These rotate every other week, so there's no way to kill them both in the same week, so it takes 2 weeks minimum. Next is Get Wrecked, which requires you to kill Shadow Thrall, get precision kills, and 150 powerful enemy defeats. Now, for Shadow Thrall, you're going to have to do at least Tier 2, because they just spawn well like non-stop during the bridge encounter. So you'll get that done rather quickly if you do Tier 2. Now, the 150 powerful enemies and the precision kills, I would just recommend farming out Tier 1 Reckoning. On top of getting Majors and Yellow Bars during Dominance, the Tier 1 boss also counts as a powerful enemy, and it's all rather simple and quick. Plus, you can also farm out Tier 1 Reckoning for, you know, illicit gear if you're a collector. Finally, the last non-roll triumph here is to acquire the Thorn Exotic Hand Cannon. This is an entire quest all on its own, so if you want to see a guide on that, I already have it up on the channel, and I'll leave a link in the description. Alright, so now that just leaves the Reaper, Invader, Collector, and Sentry-related triumphs. Keep in mind that while having the Notorious sets for these will help immensely, you do not need these sets for some of these. All you need is the plus 10 for the aura for them, which means you can get away with wearing, let's say, four pieces of outlaw armor and then just popping a synth for whatever role you need to get a plus 11. But with that being said, some of the objectives do need it, such as summoning giant blockers where you need to be plus 15. So I suggest getting all the notorious sets and then doing these, but you could choose whatever you want, however you want to play. With that being said, let's start with Collector. For Triumphant Collector, you need to get 10 wins, deposit 1,000 motes, summon 100 small blockers, and summon 40 giant blockers, as well as get 15 half-banked metals. These are all fairly straightforward. Summon small blockers whenever possible and try to dunk giant blockers in when your enemy rotations become a bunch of giant yellow bar enemies, like let's say a bunch of giant knights, a bunch of uh, cyclopses, things like that, you know? Don't try to go after it when there's a bunch of small enemies and it takes you a while to collect 20. That way, you're not really detrimental to your team, you're just trying to time it well so you don't screw them over. In case some are unaware, Half Banked is the metal that says you need to collect 50 motes and bank them. That's it, there's nothing super complicated, that's all there is for the Collector Triumph. For Triumphant Invader, you need 10 wins, get 25 super kills, 25 sniper or linear fusion rifle kills, 25 shotgun or regular fusion rifle kills, as well as 25 other kills of any kind, aka you can abuse Hammerhead or Thunderlord, just like the rest of the population. 
finally, the last part is to drain 100 moats from your enemy bank by standing next to it with a plus 15 invader set. The best way to optimize doing this, in my opinion, is to use either a Sentinel Titan and popping down a Ward of Dawn bubble, or using a Well of Radiance Warlock and just putting it down on the bank and to pick off any players that try to challenge you. For Triumphant Reaper, you need to win 20 matches, defeat 1,000 enemies, kill 50, yes, 50 high value targets, and no, regular yellow bars do not count defeat 100 blockers or envoys, and obtain 10 Massacre Medals. Now, the Massacre Medal is triggered by killing 12 enemies within a few seconds of each other. The best advice I can give on this is to spawn trap incoming enemy waves with supers. An extremely good example I can give is using a Night Stalker with Orpheus Rigs on Legion's Folly. Once the Drifter says, enemies coming to the drill, you shadow shoot the door right next to the drill and immediately kill everything in sight that spawns in front of you. This can also work on the left side of base at the spawn on top middle. Additionally, you can also use other supers such as Dawnblade, Top Tree Nova Bomb, Bottom Tree Striker, Top Tree Golden Gun, Arch Strider, and so on. I personally just found Night Slucker consistent with Tether, but I stuck with that. Last thing to know about this, for HPTs, just keep your awareness up for when the Drifter calls out HPTs. Once it spawns, go find it, get at least one shot on it, you don't need to kill the final blow, and just kill it, get your credit, and move on to the other 49 you have to get. Finally, for a Triumphant Sentry, you need to win 20 matches, mark 40 invaders, defeat 200 blockers, defeat 150 Taken, and earn 20 Locksmith Medals, allegedly. So defeating blockers and Taken is pretty basic. To mark invaders, you have to simply just shoot them while they're invading with your plus 10 aura, and they can be defeated by either you or your teammate. For Locksmith Medals, this can get a little tricky. Despite the Triumph saying to basically kill the last three blockers before the Primeval in a single round, it doesn't really follow that, at least not for me. What I found that worked for me is to kill 5 blockers within a single round before a Primeval was summoned, getting all final blows by the way. Sadly, if you aren't in a full fire team, you can't really control your teammates and, you know, for them to not be detrimental to your final blows, but I would highly recommend using heavy guns with burst damage like shotguns or maybe even Warcliff to seal the deal on your kills. Aside from that, some people have told me they've had luck doing the uh, 3 blocker kills in quick succession to get the medal. I can't confirm that personally, I stuck with the method I mentioned, but if that works, go ahead and try it out and hopefully it works for you. If you've completed all of this, you're an effing grinder and congrats on your Reckoner. The Drifter will have a special message just for you in the tower. That's all I have for this Reckoner guide, if this helps you guys, a like and a sub would be appreciated, and stay tuned for more videos in the future. And I'm out.